Good morning. I want to welcome you to this time of worship. A special welcome to our friends from St. James United who are joining us for joint summer worship services. My name is Shirley Hazen and I'm filling in for Stephen for the next two Sundays while he is on study leave. I'm here with Malcolm, Ian, and the AV team. Here, Malcolm will be standing in for you, the congregation, by reading your responses. I ask that you join him at home. Our service today will be a mixture of live and recorded pieces that will take approximately 40 minutes. And I've arranged it so that the beginning is more kid-friendly, and our first hymn is perfect for dancing or rhythm instruments. We have not come together physically in body, but we are coming together in spirit. And sometimes at the beginning of the service, we haven't quite fully arrived in spirit. Sometimes our frustration with technology or other things is still with us. So it is time to take a moment to clear our thoughts, to let go of our irritations so that we may be present to the Spirit of God that joins us together. So symbolically, let's clear ourselves of these irritations. Big breath in and a long breath out. The breath reminds us that God breathed life into humans in the beginning of time and that he breathed the breath of life into the church at Pentecost. That breath was the beginning of a story of relationship that stretched through time and place. This morning, Anthony and Bridget Archibald are going to lead us in our call to worship. You are invited to join with Anthony in the responses. We come like Abraham, Sarah, and John the Baptist. People with vision. We come like Job, Thomas, and the Samaritan woman. People with questions. We come like Moses, Jeremiah, and Mary. People with self-doubts. We come like Joshua, Deborah, and Stephen. People with courage. We come like David, Mary Magdalene, and Paul. People with regrets. We come like Hagar, Uriah, and the Syrophoenician woman. People with wisdom from the margins. We come like Rebecca and Samuel, like Hosea and Esther, like Nathaniel and Martha, like John, Mark, and Priscilla. People with a part to play in the story of faith. As people to play with a part in the story of faith, let us talk to our God together in prayer. Loving God, you have given us life and love. We come together as your people, as your church, to worship you, to hear you speak to us through the Bible, through music, through words, and through the silences in between. We come together in a strange time, O Lord, when we cannot be all together physically as a community, at a time of uncertainty and of hope. We come to hear you, to be comforted and to be challenged. Breathe your life-giving spirit amongst us. Amen. Let us listen for what God is saying to us in this video that Mark Hazen did of the Bible story about Isaac and Rebekah. The story of Isaac and Rebekah, based on Genesis chapter 24. Abraham saw Isaac grow into a young man, and he worried about who Isaac would marry. He wanted Isaac to have someone who knew the Lord God. But Abraham was too old to travel, and travel was too dangerous to risk Isaac going. So he called in his most trusted servant and gave him the task to go to Abraham's relatives to find Isaac a wife. The servant was willing, but asked, What if I find a suitable woman, but she does not want to come here? Wouldn't it be better if I took Isaac with me? Abraham was adamant. No, absolutely not. 
The Lord God brought me here and promised to give this land to my offspring. If the woman is unwilling, you are released from your oath. Just trust in the Lord. So the servant took ten camels and many good things and traveled back to Abraham's home, the town that had, been, that had the name of his brother Nahor. When he arrived, he had the camels kneel down near the well outside the town, where at dusk the town's woman would come to draw water. Then he prayed to God, O oh Lord, give me success and show us kindness. May it be that when I ask a girl to give me a drink, that she will say, Yes, drink, and I will draw water for your camels as well. If so, let her be the one you have chosen for your servant Isaac. Before he had finished praying, a beautiful young woman arrived at the well. When the servant asked her for a drink, she immediately responded, Certainly, and while you drink, I will draw water for your camels. The servant drank deeply, watching her as she drew water for all the camels. Then he pulled out a gold nose ring and two gold bracelets and gave them to her in gratitude. He then asked her her name and if she might have a room for him to stay the night. Upon learning that she was Rebekah, the granddaughter of Abraham's brother, and that indeed they should have room for him, he praised God and introduced himself as a servant of Abraham. Rebekah then ran ahead to her home to tell her family. Her brother, Laban, then went out to the servant and said, Come you who are blessed by the Lord. The house is prepared for you and your camels. So they went to the house and unloaded the camels. But before they could eat, the servant insisted on explaining his mission. He said, I come from Abraham, Nahor's brother. The Lord has blessed him with many sheep and cattle, gold and silver, men and women servants, and camels and other animals. In their old age, Abraham and Sarah have been blessed with a son, Isaac, and Abraham has given Isaac all that he owns. Abraham wants a wife for Isaac, who knows and honors the Lord, and so has sent me here to find a wife from amidst his own people. When I asked, what if I cannot find anyone who will come back to this far country? He replied, the Lord will send his angel with you and make your journey a success. When I arrived, I prayed to the Lord God for a sign of whom he had chosen, a sign such as responding with generosity to my camels when I asked for a drink of water for myself. And thus it occurred when I asked Rebecca for a drink. So I gave her the nose ring and bracelets in gratitude, and I praised the Lord for bringing me here. But now tell me if Rebecca is willing to return with me to be Isaac's wife. Rebecca's mother and brother responded, This is from the Lord. What else could we do besides letting her go? Then the servant brought out the rest of the gifts he had brought from Abraham and gave them to him. The next morning he asked if they could leave immediately. But Laban and Rebekah's mother wanted him to stay for ten days. Again the servant asked to leave immediately. Finally they agreed to ask Rebekah, and she said she was ready to go. So they packed and left for Abraham's home. Many weeks later as they approached Abraham's camp, they saw a young man approaching them across the fields. Rebekah asked, who is that approaching? And the servant said, That is Isaac. Rebecca then covered her face, for they each fell in love with one another at first sight. Listen to what the Spirit is saying to the church. Sir Winston has joined me for the Bible story. You may have met Sir Winston on Kid's Corner. He's very quiet, especially in front of a camera but he loves stories. And Sir Winston and I had quite a chat when Mark was putting this together. Sir Winston was thinking about what if he was a servant? He thought he'd be very nervous. What if he made a mistake? Not only would Isaac have to live with her, but the servant being in the house would also have to live with her too. He said it was a lot of responsibility and 
And how, if he was a servant, he would know what to do? Sir Winston thought it was very smart for the servant to pray to God to show him a sign for such a big decision. And then we also started to talk about Rebecca, how very kind she was to offer a stranger a drink, and also all those camels, and, and arrange for the whole group to stay at her family's home. And what she must have thought of that unexpected offer of marriage particularly after listening to the story about the servant praying for a sign. But what did she agree to do? She agreed to it and went off on a journey the next day to an unknown place and an unknown people. The story tells us about people that went off in faith and trust at a time of uncertainty. And we all have times of uncertainty, times that we just don't know what's happening, what to do. And, you know, we're living through one of those times now with COVID when we couldn't go to places that we ordinarily went and we couldn't see people. And now there's changes, but we can't do things the same way. We just really don't know what's happening. And Winston, Sir Winston and I think that story tells us that we should trust in God and that God will be with us on the journey. So let's have a little prayer together, and then we'll sing a song which is really good for dancing or playing in rhythm. So if you could bow your head and repeat after me, along with Malcolm, Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Helping, help us when we're not sure what to do. Help us when we're not sure what to do. Help us to be kind to others and to your world. Help us to be kind to others and your world. Amen. Amen. And today, Malcolm is going to lead us in the hymn, One More Step Along the World I Go. The words will be on the screen, so please join along at home. One more step along the world I go, one more step along the world I go, from the old things to the new, keep me traveling along with you, and it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you. Round the corner of the world I go, more and more about the world I know. All the new things that I see, keep me looking at along with me. And it's from the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you. As I travel through the bad and good, keep me traveling the way I should. Where I see no way to go, you'll be traveling me the way to know. And it's on the old I travel to the new, keep me traveling along with you. Give me courage when the world is rough. Keep me laughing though the world is tough. Leap and sing in all I do. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I'll travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. You are older than the world can be. You are younger than the life in me. Ever old and ever new. Keep me traveling along with you. And it's from the old I'll travel to the new. Keep me traveling along with you. Today's lectionary has a reading from Paul's letter to the Romans, and it's a real tongue twister, but I've extracted some parts of it. 
For what I want to do, I do not do, but hate what I do. For what I do is not the good I want to do, no, the evil that I do not want to do, this I keep doing. And some days doesn't that just seem to be us? The Anglican Book of Crom and Prayer would call it sins of omission and sins of commission. Part of that traveling from the old to the new that the hymn talked about is to leave some of our unnecessary baggage or burdens behind, to let go of the things that separate us from the love of God and others. Shall we confess and lay down the burden of our sins? Loving God, we come before you weighed down by our burdens, the burdens of our guilt, the kind words not spoken, the words said in anger, the words said in fear, the actions not done in love, the actions that diminished others. Let us lay down our burdens before God. We come with our burdens of regret, we have benefited from a society that makes many allowances for white people and few for other peoples. We come with the regret of living in a society that does not value the work of care for others, the regret of living in a world where relatively few have so much and so many have so little. Let us lay down our burdens before you. We come with the burden of worry, the worry we carry for our families, the worries we carry about a world with COVID, the worries we carry for the earth. Let us lay down our burdens before you. Forgive us for creating and carrying them. Help us to walk in your way. Amen. At the end of the reading, Paul gave thanks to God through Jesus Christ our Lord, who rescues us from the burden of our sins. We can be assured that having confessed of our sins and laid down the burden of them before God, God in God's love has forgiven us. Thanks, thanks. be to God. Amen. And like that no fishing sign, we are not to go back to catch those burdens. During our call to worship, we said we came as a people with a vision. Let us remind ourselves what vision we have for our church. Grace United Church is an affirming ministry committed to transforming lives by living God's vision as an active part of the diverse community in the heart of Dartmouth. In the name of Jesus Christ, we journey together in faith as people, embracing every age, race, gender identity, sexual orientation, family composition, mental and physical ability, cultural background, and socioeconomic status in the life and work of Grace United Church. Our gospel reading this morning is taken from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30 in the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplaces and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We walked, wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came drink, eating and drinking, and they say, Look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners. Yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and knows, no one knows the Father except the Son, 
and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. May God's blessing be upon this reading from the Holy Word. Please join our previously recorded quintet of Douglas Jones, Terry O'Driscoll, Ian and Mim Frazier, and Francis Wallace, accompanied by Malcolm, in singing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Open our eyes that we may see the truth. Open our ears that we may hear the truth. Open my mouth that I may speak the truth. Amen. We have been offered a gift, a gift that we may not have recognized, and if we were offered a choice, we probably would have returned. We have been offered the opportunity to rethink reimagine, revision our lives, our society, our church. Now, for many of us, this was not the opportunity or timing that we would have chosen. So many opportunities aren't. This gift of the great shutdown or the great pause has often come with great cost, job layoffs, fiscal hardships for the essential workers long, hard hours, lack of physical contact, and for some, illness and death. It has led us to questions. What is essential in our lives? Why are things so unfair? What can we do about it? And even, where is God in all of this? This gift is an opportunity to revision how we do or be the church in this time and place. We are like the servant and Rebecca, starting out on a strange journey without quite knowing how things are going to unfold. In the beginning of this, many churches pivoted in terms of offering worship service online. Then once we got past that first Sunday, larger questions started to come forward, and they're still coming forward. The church is more than a Sunday service. 
It is a community of believers and a community of believers that lives out their faith in a wider world. And just how do we do that now? Our church reclaimed the original role of elders to care for people on their newly resurrected lists. You have seen our moments for mission, how our people still delivered food and funds to Margaret's house and the food bank, how we provide a church school to our youngsters. You have seen how the United Churches for Dartmouth have been coming together in new ways to provide spiritual encouragement through spiritual reflections and something for our children. And later on, in a moment for mission, you will see how some of this online church service happens. We have experienced some loosening of restrictions as a number of cases have gone down, but we still live with the knowledge that COVID will remind, remain with us for a while. Changing how we do things and changing how we will be the church. But how does this even relate to today's reading from Matthew? We are used to the concept of an oak. We have seen them in historical buildings, places like Ross Farm, or maybe you've even seen them in action in ox pulling matches. It's a wooden cross piece that goes over the back of the next, usually a pair of animals with loops underneath that fasten them to something to be pulled. Yokes work well, especially if they were carved to fit the animal that would be fastened to it. It would lighten the burden. That concept of a yoke was true in Jesus' day, but it also had additional meaning. In his day, the people he was talking to would understand that he was talking about a yoke of a set of laws, of interpretations and expectations of the religious authorities. Some 600 purity laws of thou shalt do's and thou shalt not do's. The laws of Moses and more interpretation. The burden laid heavy upon the people, especially of the people that were occupied. Jesus offered them a different way than all those laws. Later on in Matthew, he summed up all the laws and the prophets into two commandments. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. He invited people to make an exchange of the yoke of law for the yoke of love. And a burden of love is much lighter and easier to bear than a burden of law. In the two millenniums since Christ uttered that, the organized church, influenced by the culture around it, has laid out burdens or rules on its followers. Some such as no women in pastoral positions, no theater, no dancing, no alcohol, no divorce, have come and gone. But we may have others around that are unnecessary burdens. My father's family stopped going to church when the expectation was that their boys would be dressed in suits. It was an unrealistic expectation for a poor fisherman with a growing family. When I grew up, you wouldn't clap in church. And I'm not too sure if you would even laugh in church. Now, as long as you aren't in front of the camera, the state of dress or undress doesn't matter. And when I wrote answers to questions I would like to have answered without asking, I encouraged people to laugh, especially at the minister's jokes. It makes them feel better. But do we have rules, unspoken or otherwise, that are burdens? Things like, that's my pew. You need to put money into the collection plate. You are too much of a sinner to be welcomed in this building. Or have we picked up too much of the culture of the world around us? That group is too lazy. Or I don't like their lifestyle. They're not worthy of our help. 
This pandemic has offered us an opportunity to pause, to reimagine the church. And we must keep in mind that we have made an exchange from the burden of law to the burden of love. Our song of faith has recognized that the church has, can have its shortcomings. It had said, the church has not always lived up to its vision. It required the spirit to reorient it, helping it to live an emerging faith while honoring traditions, challenging it to live by grace rather than by entitlement, for we are called to be a blessing to the earth. Are we being a blessing? Are we living up to our vision and mission statement? As we talk about embracing all peoples in the life and work of this church, are we? You only have to listen to news to know that our black siblings and our indigenous siblings are not being treated fairly. Are we lightening their yoke in love? Tomorrow night is the first session of the United Churches for Dartmouth's new study called Be the Bridge. It's facilitated by the Reverend Catherine McDonald and it's about us working on ourselves before we can truly do the work of racial reconciliation. Please consider joining. Check out our Facebook or website for further details. As our call to worship says, we are a people with visions, with questions, with regrets, with courage, and with wisdom from the margins. And we all have a part to play in the story of our faith. And one part that you can play in that story of faith, in our revisioning about how to be the church in this time and place, is to respond to questions that many of you would have received in an email letter sent out on Thursday. If you didn't receive it, check out our website or links on our Facebook. The letter gave an update about where we are in terms of being able to worship together in this building. We expect it would happen until September as the committee works out how we can come together safely on the basis of what we know about this virus. The letter asks for your perspective, your wisdom. You are invited to give your feedback to questions asked by the survey by email or by calling the office and indicating you'd like to talk to a person, we would be happy to have your insights on how we be the church in this time and place. Amen. And now let us all sing along with Jennifer Eames, Spirit, Open My Heart. Spirit, open my heart to the joy and pain of living as you love, may I love in receiving and in giving. Spirit, open my heart. God, we place my story. 
With an open heart, let us come together in prayer for God's people and God's world. Let us pray. For the people bearing the burden of unjust systems and law, we ask that they be given justice. Let us pray for the people bearing the burden of poverty. May they be given meaningful opportunities and be included in society. Let us pray for the people bearing the burdens of leadership. Grant them wisdom, courage, and compassion. Let us pray for the people bearing the burdens of illness of mind, body, and spirit. We ask that they feel your healing power and that they have cares full of kindness and compassion. Let us pray for the people bearing the burden of loneliness. May they know the gift of someone reaching out and caring. Let us pray for a world burdened by disease, pestilence, and pollution, floods, mudslides, and tornadoes. We pray that these burdens be lessened. Loving God, we recognize that we are your hands and feet. Write your love upon our hearts so that it becomes our law and that in love we lessen the burden of others. And together, let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Joni Veach prepared today's moment for mission on the AV team here at Grace. So, Grace United Church began a project to upgrade the audiovisual system. This was a continuation of work that began a few years earlier when the church replaced the entire audio system. Daryl Harvey, one of the audiovisual volunteers, says that when the church bought that new system, it was leading edge technology at the time. The upgrades to the audiovisual system were a substantial investment, both in countless volunteer hours and church funds. Volunteers on the AV team spent a lot of time learning how to use the equipment, setting up the sound system and running it during service, launching the PowerPoint slides and video feed during worship, and then uploading video files to the Grace United YouTube channel. As the audiovisual upgrade project progressed, it became clear that more could and should be done in terms of using technology to reach more people. Individuals with hearing impairments, people in nursing homes, or others who, for whatever reason, are unable to attend Sunday services and other church activities. The AV team began to think about what would be needed to begin streaming church services and other church events online. At the beginning of the year, the plan was to invest in further upgrades with hopes of being able to do online streaming sometime in 2020. When the COVID-19 pandemic hit in mid-March, shuttering all public activities, including church worship services, taking those final steps to enable internet-based service was not such a big leap. The groundwork was already in place. Daryl Harvey says that those two years of investments in upgrading the equipment and volunteer hours learning how to use the gear were key in being able to pivot quickly and launch live stream online Sunday service right away. To help the AV team have live stream capability as soon as possible, they hired a professional, Michael Hall, with Word of Mouth Media, who assisted the team determine what they needed and coached them in how to use the equipment. They placed an order right away and while they waited for the order to arrive, Michael Hall loaned some of his gear for, to the AV team. At present, there are two audio-visual teams to enable volunteers to have every other weekend off. A third team is currently being recruited and trained to spread volunteer hours out and ensure others also learn how to run the online service in the event one of the main volunteers isn't available. On Saturday afternoon, 
Reverend Fram and the AV team meet at the sanctuary to do a run-through. Reverend Fram has developed a clear set of instructions for the online streaming set up for Saturday rehearsal, as well as the Sunday morning live service, which is streamed live on the church's YouTube channel and on Facebook Live. As with the regular Sunday services in the sanctuary, Reverend Fram leads the service. A bulletin is posted on the screen as well so people can follow the order of service and join in responsive readings from home. Some videos, such as Mark Hazen's Scripture Lego and other choir pieces, as well as Jim Connolly's prayer, are pre-recorded, then streamed during the service, along with live prayers, music, and the sermon. Along with being able to do church online, the enhanced audiovisual capability will enable other church events to also be live streamed. Blair McKinnon is one of the audiovisual team volunteers. One of the advantages he sees to being able to live stream from the church sanctuary is that even when church activities resume, the capability will be there to live stream events such as baptisms and funerals, enabling more people to be able to take part even when they cannot be there in person. Well, by now you know if my instructions were as good as Stephen's in how, to lay, how we laid out this service. We're going to uh, go through a few announcements. As always, our church office remains open to look after phone and digital communications. As Stephen is on study leave, pastoral care will be provided by the Reverend Catherine McDonald. Uh, you can uh, access her through the church office. Sobeys and Superstore gift cards are available through the church office. Please contact them, and the church will receive 5% of the face value of those gift cards. United Churches for Dartmouth on their Facebook page has gone to its summer schedule, so spiritual reflections are on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays, and Kids Corner are on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And as mentioned, the United Churches for Dartmouth study, Building the Bridge, starts tomorrow night. Pre-registration is necessary. See the details on our Facebook and web page. Your support for this ministry and all our ministry is more important than ever. You can check out our web page to see varieties of options for support. Please remember, Grace, and help us to continue reaching out to you and to the community. We are not providing cookies, but we are providing an opportunity for fellowship. Please join us after the service by Zoom. I want to thank the people who made this morning possible, the people who provided us videos, and our in-sanctuary team of Malcolm Bradley, Ian Frazier, and the AV team, today Mark Hazen and Daryl Harvey. We ask your prayers for Paul McEwen, who was unable to be part of the team today because of illness. And now, as we have gathered as God's people in this time to hear the voice of God in music, in spoken word, in prayer, and in the silences in between, now it is our time to go as to God's people into the world. In doing so, may you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet, and may they see the face of Christ in you. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>